stars, sun, moon, everything moves from east to west. But earth rotates from west to east. So this is an illusion. For example, when you are going on a train, it seems like the trees and the platforms beside are moving. But do they actually move? No, right? Because we are in motion, it seems like the things which are around us also in motion. But because earth rotates from west to east, it seems like the celestial bodies rotate from east to west, the opposite direction. If we see in the sky sometimes, in the night times, it looks as if the stars are rotating, right? So those celestial bodies rotate from east to west and earth rotates from west to east. So when these objects are rotating, the stars are rotating, there is one fixed star which doesn't rotate. That is known as the pole star. So stars appear to move, stars appear to move right at a gradual progress of night, but pole star remains at its position, fixed. So this happens because pole star is in line with axis of the earth. For example, there is an umbrella. If you rotate the umbrella, the total umbrella will rotate, but the center point of umbrella will remain the same. Same way, all the stars appear to rotate, but the pole star is Line with the center axis of the earth. Because of this reason only, the pole star is fixed. So, this happens because the pole star is in line with the axis of the earth. Pole star is in line with the center axis of the earth. And pole star is located always in the northern hemisphere, in the northern part. So, pole star doesn't rotate. Pole star appears in the northern sky and it is visible from the northern hemisphere. So, this fixed position has been helping since ages how the sailors who travel during the night time because of the position of the pole star in the sky they will be able to locate the distances the locations the directions etc so far fixed position of the pole star helps to find way during the night time sailors in the sea during the night time find the ways with the help of the position of the pole star pole star is located in the northern about the pole star. Next is constellations. What is constellation? A group of stars which resemble a certain shape is known as constellation. If any stars are resembling any certain shape, it is known as constellation. So human beings have one ability. If they see any dot somewhere, they will start imagining a shape out of them any dot dots or any form. They start imagining a shape. So that ability of the human beings led to the discovery of constellations. So human beings have ability to recognize innate shapes and faces in formless things like clouds, smoke, etc. So this ability only led to the discovery of constellations. So constellations have various names. You know the 12 zodiac signs, right? Aries, Virgos, Vichy, Pisces, Leo, Sagittarius. Gemini, you know these are the 12 constellation signs, everybody has different constellation signs. So these 12 constellation signs are also a result of, these 12 zodiac signs are also a result of constellations. And some other constellation names are Great Bear, Ursa Minor, Orion, etc. So what is one constellation for Ursa Major? When is it seen? It is seen during the summers, only in the summer season during the early part of the night. It is made up of seven stars, out of which the four stars make a quadrilateral shape in the and make and show us the shape of a bowl of a ladle. You know in olden days from pots people used to take water with a ladle, right? Which had a bowl at the end. So this Ursa Major gives that it gives that illusion of that shape. So it is also known as Great Bear or Sapdarshi. And it is the shape of ladle. Ladle is nothing but a spoon type shape. It is quite close to the pole star. It lies nearer to the pole star, nearer to the northern hemisphere. So the four stars are quadrilateral shape which make the bowl of the ladle. And the remaining three stars make the handle of the ladle. So a handle and a bowl which was used for taking water from the pot in the golden days. That shape gives the name Ursa Major. So that Ursa Major represents that shape. It is a constellation. Next we have something called Orion. Orion is seen during the late evenings in the winter seasons only. And it is also called as Hunter Star. So it gives the shape of a man's 
standing holding a sword and a shield like that so it is also made up of seven stars next we have one more constellation called orion sirius sirius is one more constellation it is the brightest star in the sky and it is located close to orion so sirius looks like this which is located close to the orion so orion gives the gives us the illusion of a person standing holding the sword and a shield so that is sirius the next constellation is cassiopeia so cassiopeia constellation is seen in early nights during the winter season so in winter seasons during the early nights cassiopeia is seen it is look like the distorted distorted appearance is there distorted appearance means it gives us the shape of m or w alphabet so it looks like that shape and it is seen in the northern sky so this constellation is also seen in the northern sky and then ursa major is located close to the pole star this is the pole star so in the axis of the pole star the ursa major is located okay this is about the constellations next part of the chapter is solar system so what is solar system you are studying from primary classes about the solar system solar system consists of lots of planets that's a brief idea what people have okay so sun and the celestial bodies together make up the solar system so celestial bodies means stars satellites comets meteors asteroids planets all the dwarf planets and all the main big planets everything all together all the planets make up the celestial body so sun and the celestial bodies total make up the solar system there is some gravitational attraction always between the sun and the celestial bodies which make them revolving around the sun so all the celestial bodies all the planets revolve around the sun right why because there is a gravitational attraction between the sun and the other planets so the solar system is almost 4.6 billion years old that's a great period right a huge period 4.6 billion years old is the solar system and this solar system is made up of many members sun planets etc so each member in detail you will be learning so first member is the sun sun is the center of the solar system right it is the nearest star to us the earth earth planet to the earth planet the nearest star is the sun and it is the center of the solar system sun is a huge source of light and energy so all the energy we receive through the sun and all the light is only the source of light and energy in the daytime for the human beings on the earth is sun only right the major source of energy to us the major source of light energy the major source of light is always sun and with the solar energy people are also even producing electricity people cook then there are many purposes of the solar people establish solar panels on their terraces the, the solar panels help in heating the water and producing hot water you know yeah solar panels help in cooking then solar panels help in generating electricity with the help of sunlight right and this solar energy also helps in making the food for the plants in the process of photosynthesis so if the solar energy is not there plants will not be able to prepare food right then if plants will die all the animals all the human beings will die because of no food plants are the only source of main source of food so like that sun is a huge source of light as well as a heat energy and it is composed of hydrogen gas but on the surface of the sun the hydrogen gas gradually turns into helium gas and then it releases lot of energy hydrogen turns into helium and releases lot of energy so we can tell that sun is a source of heat and light energy for all the planets so sun is the main source of heat and light energy to all the planets not only earth the next member of the solar system is planet so a celestial body which revolves around a star is called a planet any celestial body which revolves around a star is known as the planet so planets look like stars but what is the difference between a planet and a star suppose in the night time in the sky if you see you see shiny objects but you need to differentiate between a planet and a star planets do not twinkle and do not have bright light whereas stars will be twinkling that is the only difference so planets look like stars. 
stars but they do not have any light of their own that stars and planets will be emitting bright light right but they do not produce that light they only reflect the sunlight that falls on them so they reflect the sunlight that falls on them that is the reason we are able to see light on the stars and the planets so there is something called orbit what is the definition of orbit the definite path in which planet revolves around the sun planets revolve around the sun all the planets revolve around the sun so the path in which they are revolving is known as the orbit then period of revolution since planets are revolving around the sun the time taken by a planet to complete one revolution around the sun is known as the period of revolution time taken by a planet to complete one revolution around the sun as the distance increases from the planet to sun the time of revolution also increases period of revolution increases as the distance increases from the sun to the planet next is period of rotation so besides revolving around the sun the planets also revolve around itself that is rotation